Hello and welcome to the playlist on SAP and Power Platform here on the SAP on Azure YouTube channel. Now that we have all the bits and pieces in place, we can use the on-premises data gateway to connect to the SAP system. We know how to create a Power Automate flow to access either an RFC or table in our SAP system. It is time to put this in action in an actual app. So we will build a Power App. What we want to do is display some basic information on available sales orders in an Power App. Obviously, for an SAP function person, this is no problem. You go to your SAP system, start transaction VA03, and display a sales order. But how do we get the data from there to a Power App? As always, there are multiple ways, and we will talk about Power Automate Desktop or using OData services to get to this information. But from now, Let's continue with remote function calls and see what we can get from there. So let's take a look. So as mentioned, in an F SAP system, we can just go to VA03. We can select a certain sales order. We can take a look at these sales orders. And for example, we can see there's the sold to party. There's a ship to party. And there's a customer reference number. And if we take a closer look at one of these um, partners, we can also get additional information, like, for example, also here, the sales area and, and, and some others. So with this, we actually want to call not this um, Dynpro screen, but we want to call the underlying um, remote function module. And actually, if we start searching here for BAPI sales order, we can actually see there's a BAPI sales order get list. So, so that's the one that we want to, to test. And we can see um, two of the parameters that we need to enter is the customer number and the sales organization. So just with the information that we just saw, let's actually take here um, the customer number and also uh, the sales organization, which is this uh, 1710. And let's see what we get. So actually, you can see there's lots of information. There are 600 um, um, 70 entries just for this um, specific um, customer. Um, you can see all these different um, sales um, order documents and there's lots of content um, returned by this specific uh, um, function module. So this is now what we want to use in our Power App. So let's switch over to Power App and um, in, instead of starting with the Power Automate flow, um, remember we did this in previous videos, we called the remote function call. Um, let's start by building a simple app. So we'll start a blank app. We'll just click here on create for this Canvas app. We, we just want to do this for a phone factor and we'll call this um, display sales orders from SAP. Let me click here on create. And now a, a blank canvas um, for our Power App is created. Now, if you are a good designer, then obviously maybe you want to change the theme. You, you may want to add some additional style sheets. And for, for my specific case, um, what we need is obviously two input fields. We need one input field um, for the customer number, which I'll just drag and drop over here. We need definitely another input field here um, for the sales organization. That's what we just saw in the specific bar piece. So maybe let's add here um, some some text labels here, some input fields. And then what we can do, we, we can um, change the text here, obviously. So, so this will be the customer number. This will be the sales organization. And now these input fields, they have um, different keys. So, so what I'll do is instead of this text input one, we'll call this text input customer number. And this will be our text input sales org. So with these two things, um, we obviously need an action. So, so we'll, we'll use a button um, that the user can click to actually um, kick off uh, the flow. And then we want to display the available sales orders here in a virtual gallery. So this will be our very, very basic um, power app. And, and we'll do some fine tuning, but, but overall, um, that's all that we need. Now, obviously, what we want to do is once someone clicks this button, um, something should happen. And, and the trigger should actually be a power automate flow. So in this on select, we'll soon bind this button to a power automate flow. But we don't have the power automate flow yet. 
So what I will do is here in Power App, I'll just click here on the Power Automate button and I'll start by um, creating a new flow. If I already had the flow, then I could just select it here. We could bind this existing flow to our Power App, but for now we'll just create a new flow. So you can see there's a bunch of um, templates that I can choose from, but in my specific case, I really want to um, start from a blank um, Power Automate flow. So now the process is very much like before. We'll um, start with a new step. Um, in our case, we want to call an SAP system. So I'll search for ERP. We'll use the call SAP function v2. And very much like before, we enter our system details. And then we search for our um, BAP, for our RFC. Um, as, as seen before, the RFC is called BAP underscore sales order. And we can just select here the BAPI sales order get list. That's exactly the one that we um, saw previously in the SAP GUI screen. And now Power Automate fetches all the relevant, the required parameters. And you can see we have these two um, settings here, the customer number and the sales organization. And obviously these are the text input fields that we want to pass over from the Power App. So what we'll say is we'll select here, ask in Power App for the customer number. And we'll do the same thing here for the sales organization. So I'll again, click here on sales organization, and then I'll select again, ask in Power App, which now means we have two input fields from Power App for our Power Automate flow that we will use to execute the call to the SAP system. Actually, with this, we can already give it a try. So if I save this Power Automate flow, I have it now here in the available list of um, Power Automate flows. And now if I go to the button, and to the on select, what I can immediately do is I can say power app and you can immediately see there's a power app call SAP function v2. I, I could have given this this power automate flow a different name, but for now I'll just um, use this one. And you can see if I start typing here that um, this power automate flow has this run parameter. And in this run parameter, you can see there are two um, input variables that, that are required. So the customer number, and as mentioned before, we want to use the text input customer number. And there, obviously, we want to have the text um, value. And the same thing for the text input sales organization. There, we also want to retrieve um, the text information. So with this, what we'll do is um, when someone clicks this button, we execute this Power Automate flow, we pass over these two values. And, and that's basically it. So let's give it a try. Um, if we if I click here on the play button on the preview button, um, I can enter here um, the customer number. And I can also enter here the sales organization. And now if I click the button, then the power automate flow is triggered. Let's actually check this. Let's switch over to power automate. And if we go here to my flows, we should now see the Power Automate flow that was created out of Power Apps. Here it is, it was just created um, two minutes ago. If I click on edit, then you can see here our two steps. If I quickly go back here, then we can also see that it was executed once. And if I take a look at this execution, this was the execution that we did um, from Power Apps, we can see that the result of these, uh, this RFC call returned all these 600 whatever um, sales order documents. So you can also see that I can only see the output um, in, a, in a downloadable file. So, so let's click on that. And then you'll see the, the reason why that is the case. It's a lot of information that I got back from the SAP system. So, so this is really a lot of um, content that was retrieved or returned from my, my SAP system. So here you can see all these different um, sales orders that were returned from the SAP system. And you can see it's a very, very long list. And I probably don't want to expose all of this information to my Power App, but I want to really filter some of the information and only um, return a subset of this information in my Power App. So what I'll do is I'll create a new structure and only select certain fields that I want to expose um, to my Power App. So I'll go here to next step. And there's actually an action that allows me to select properties from a previous call and add these properties into a new structure. So I'll select the select statement here. And the 
from? So, so where do I want to retrieve this information from? Is actually from my call SAP function. So you can see here on the right hand side, I have all the return information from this call SAP function. You can see there's there's the um, return code, the return message and so on. But if I scroll down here, you can also see all these different sales order items. And one of these properties here is actually the whole table of the sales orders. This is the table of orders of the customer. So I'll select this one, the sales orders as the um, input as the source, and I'll just map a few um, properties. So one of the properties um, that I can find that I saw here, actually, actually, I saw this um, in the JSON structure here. So so there's this SD doc, and I think it definitely makes sense to expose this one. So what I'll do is I'll just um, take here the sales order SD doc in here, and I'll map this to a key SD doc. Now, I'll repeat the same thing for, for some more of these properties. So, so let's start with the, um, with the item number, with the material and something like that. So I'll just here use the item number. And now what I could do is I could use in Power Automate the very same thing that I just um, select here, um, this property. So here the um, item number, oops, sorry, over here, the item number, then maybe next is uh, the material. And I just want to show instead of selecting the list from here, what I can also do is I can just go here to expressions. I can say here from the items, I want to select the property in this case, the purchase number. So if I click on OK, I can do the very same thing. And actually, if I would um, save this, then it automatically replaces this with a um, with a variable. So with this now, I have some information that maps or extracts information from this huge list of sales orders and just extracts these numbers here. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to return this information um, back to our Power App. So what I'll use, I'll use the response functionality and return with status code 200 um, the results of this select statement. So the output of this select statement. So with this, let's give it another try. I'll just click on save again. We can switch over here to our Power App and I can just click the button. So basically, we are triggering again our Power Automate flow. So if I go back here, you can see it was just executed. If I take a look at this one, then you can see we, we got our two input parameters um, from the Power App. The Power, um, the um, SAP call was um, triggered. And then we extracted, we mapped the relevant information from this huge input file into a much, much smaller um, output. So what, what I'll do is I'll just um, take here a few sample points because now in the response, what I want to do is obviously we have the response here. Uh, or actually, let, let me take it from here. We have the response from um, our call to the SAP system, but um, the response is very generic. So the body doesn't really know what, what are these different properties. So what we'll do is we'll map this to a schema. If I go here to response and if I click on the show advanced options, then we can generate a schema from a sample. So what I'll do is I'll just take this uh, few uh, items here that we got so that it's very clear that we have an array that we have always this block here of data. And now if I click on done, we can see that um, it is an array, it has these different items. And that's actually perfect. That's exactly what I need um, for my power app. So let's save this flow and switch back over to power apps. To make sure that power apps actually knows the latest status or has the latest status of our Power Automate flow. Let's refresh the connection here. And let's just give it another try. So if I click on the button, and I can actually do this here directly if I press the Alt key, and I click the button, then it's not only the design time, but it's actually executing here, which is pretty cool. Then now the information has been fetched. And let me quickly actually show you one, one other cool thing here. There's also this monitor, this um, um, Power Apps monitor, which allows me to track the actual traffic that is originating from this power app. So if I if I've started now this monitor, if I go back here, if I execute here one more time, 
um, this button. If I switch over to this monitor, then you can see actually there's this use um, action. And then here there's this network trace. So we can really see what actually happens. And you can see button one was um, was triggered, it was clicked. We executed this power automate flow. And actually you can see here a lot of data was actually sent over to my um, power automate flow and we got a lot of information back. So we have all this header information here, but more importantly, we have here all this um, information that was returned from the SAP system. So with this information, what I can actually do is instead of just calling this, let's map the results into a collection. So what I'll do is I'll call a clear collect and you can see it's really cool that Power Automate always suggests um, the different um, uh, parameters that I can use and we'll um, map this into a variable called um, s sales orders and we'll paste the result here from this Power Automate call in this sales orders. So actually, if I do this again, so let me execute here this button, then not only will I see here the trace in um, the monitor, but you can also see there's one new step here, clear collect. And that's actually really interesting because now if I take a look at the collections, then you can see I have this set sales order collection now, and you can also see all the data that was fetched from the SAP system and that is now available here in this um, set sales collection. And with this one, we can now finally go into our um, uh, into our gallery here. We'll map this gallery to the set sales order collection. And now you can already see it already fetched the information from the from the um, SAP system. Now, what, what I want to do is I want to change this a little. This, this layout doesn't really make a lot of sense. We don't need an image. So I'll just use um, title, subtitle, and body. Um, and we will map the different fields here. So let's say the title should be maybe our SD document number. Then maybe the subtitle should be, okay, let's keep it the, the, the item and the material. That's that's all good. But maybe it would also be nice to have some additional fields. So, so what I'll just do is I'll just um, drag and drop another label here. Let's make this a little smaller. You can see it automatically suggested some of these properties. Um, I actually would like to change this from the purchase order number. Let's um, delete this one. And um, you can see here, if I just um, start typing again, it already suggests um, all the available um, properties. And what I'll do is I'll just um, do use here this doc date. And that's actually another pretty cool thing that I really like about the Power Platform. Um, let's say I'm not super happy with the date format here. So I would really like to reformat this since I'm in Germany. I would really like to, to reformat this into um, day, month, year. But I, I don't know the regular expression or I don't know the exact um, formatting what I can do. So, so using Power Platform, what I can do is I can just say, instead of this one, please change this to 4th of February 2017 and get me some ideas. And now we're using the built-in AI capabilities to create the relevant formula to actually change this displayed date into the one that I want. So I'll just click on apply and, and keep a look at the, these other dates here. If I click on apply, then it immediately changes this to the format that I actually want. And that's actually all there is. Um, obviously, I could now fine tune um, the, the whole app, make it a little more beautiful looking and stuff like that. But with this, I'm ready to go. I can just um, click this this button. We are fetching the latest information from the SAP system. We can scroll. You can see I have here a long, long list of um, all the sales orders that are now um, returned from the SAP system. And everything is in an easy to use way as I expected. So I hope this quick tour of um, starting from, from a blank screen, basically, um, using Power Automate to connect to the SAP system, calling um, a remote enabled function module and getting the results, stripping the results to only the, the information that is relevant for me, and then getting this information into a Power App um, showed you how easy it is to um, connect um, your, your Power Apps to an SAP system and really work with the data, new tools and new applications. Thanks for watching.